thank you for joining us tonight for Answers for Life. What a topic, Answers for Life. Because, you know, I'm sure you, as I, many times are so confused until we want somebody to give us an answer, and we're searching for answers. Um, I know we go to school. I tell young people all the time, if you think you're going to learn everything you need to learn while you're in college, and you graduate from college, you got all the knowledge, think again. I was talking to someone the other day, and I said, think about it. I graduated from college with a Bachelor of Science degree in 1959. 59, think about it. Cell phones was something for the imagination. Space travel was Dick Tracy and Buck Rogers. I mean, you know, science has moved. If we don't move with it, we get lost in time. One of the things that took place in the late 70s, 80s, and into the 90s was Christian counseling. Uh, previous to that, they thought we Christians uh, really didn't. We were stuck in the dark ages, thought the world was just 6,000 years old, and uh, we didn't know what was going on. But Christian counseling, mainly thanks to Liberty University, <clears throat> excuse me, some others, that started training Christians to do Christian counseling. And now it is a one of the important moves in our, especially our part of the country, that Christian counseling is really taking its roots because I know myself, I refer to myself as a Christian counselor. And I've had battles with the court system and DSS and others. They think we are not qualified to do it. Right. Well, I'm qualified in two ways. I'm qualified because I went to school to learn, and I'm qualified because I have the anointing of the Holy Spirit and believe in the Bible. And the Bible is ultimately the counselor book. And uh, with us tonight, as was last week, there's <clears throat> two people who head up the Charleston Christian Counseling Associates, uh, Miss Diane Arnold and Angel Weaver. And last week she talked about the emotional therapy and mainly geared to what it does in the early childhood and how it affects even adults. And you know, I was, I was thinking about something. Did you know, according to some studies, when a baby comes out of the womb in the third trimester of pregnancy, the brain is fully developed to where that child recognizes languages, voices, and people. And when that baby comes out of the womb, 15 to 20 percent of its emotional program is already completed. That's, that boggles the mind. And then up to nine years old, eight and a half or nine, three chemicals are not present in the brain. And those are the chemicals that helps maturation begin to take place. And those are so formative years. The way a child is treated, the environment, all of this uh, affects their entire psyche and who they become. And, and last week, uh, that was so, Angel so wonderfully brought out how that affects even into adulthood. Tonight, they're going to continue a little bit with that, but then we're going to be talking about marriage. So if you're married, don't tell me you don't have problems, you know. <laughs> There's a verse in the Bible that if you don't have theological training, you might have trouble, you might have a little trouble understanding it. So I'll explain it. It's in Proverbs. It said, where there is no ox, the stall is clean. <laughs> Explanation. If you have an ox, you have ox poop. Now we're not formula, we don't like it that much. But the next verse, see the, the object will be, we'll get rid of the ox. No, the next verse says, but by the strength of the ox, much good is accomplished. So here we look at it. If you want the ox, you got to put up an ox put. Now let me tell you something. There's no such thing as a poofery marriage. There are certain things that you have to do to have a good marriage. And we're going to be talking about that tonight. But again, I want you to welcome my guest, and I'm so happy they've joined us, uh, Angel Weaver and uh, Diane Arnold from Thank the Charleston you. Counseling. And just take it and share it. Good Thank to you. see you again. Thank it's you. good to be back. Thank you. Good yeah. analogy. <laughs> I like that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today, follow up on last week's topic on attachment styles mm -hmm. and how they affect your relationships. 
And last week, um, I think we ha put up a, a graph that so slowly or partially explained what happens within these four different attachment styles. Mm -hmm. And we're going to kind of move that into, you know, what those attachment <coughs> styles do within a relationship. So um, just a quick review, there's a secure attachment style, an avoidant, um, an ambivalent or anxious attachment style, and what is called a disorganized or fearful, and that's um, a child that has had some, potentially some background trauma in their life. So a lot of the material that I'm going to take or talk about today, is, is get as far as we can get today, um, is taken from a model called Emotion Focused Couples Therapy. Uh, it's a therapy um, by a Sue Johnson that is um, what we would consider a very effective way to help couples understand, underline what's happening to them within a relationship. So we are going to take that slide from last time and walk into one with attachment and intimacy. Um, our goal is always to be a, uh, have secure attachment. However, 85% of the time, um, one or both of the couples within a relationship is going to have a different type, <laughs> a more insecure. So everything that's not secure is called insecure. So secure attachment adults have higher self-esteem. They get enjoyment out of their relationships. They have the ability to seek out support systems and understand each other. If um, partners are not responsive to each other's bids for attention, then we probably, as a counselor, are looking at some type of an insecure attachment. Um, an avoidant attachment style. I always like to explain that um, a little bit by saying they're often raised in a home, and again, not necessarily bad parents in any way, but they learn that the adage of buck it up, get your big boy girl panties on and take care of yourself. And they do. Mm -hmm. They learn how to go away mm -hmm. and kind of assess the situation themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, that causes what we call in couples counseling going to the cave. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. things are getting hard, things are getting rough within the relationship, they have a tendency to shut down and, yeah. and go away to figure it out, not to cause trouble, but go away to figure it out. I always give the analogy of, um, if, you, if you're their hunters out there, you know, if an animal is fatally wounded, it ducks under something to mm -hmm. die, you know, necessarily. However, you know, what happens if you stick your hand in there? <laughs> so that's, that's what avoidant can be like. I'm going mm -hmm. away to protect myself, mm -hmm. but they can come out fighting if you keep pushing. Mm. So a lot of self-protection, a lot of self-sufficiency in, in the avoidant category. Um, and that, we said this last week, but that self-protection, that self-sufficiency can work great in certain parts of your life, but not so great in your marriage. Um, not so great maybe in your relationship right. with God where it's very hard to surrender to him. It's very hard to um, find a place of intimacy with him. And so right. I'm just going to add that. Yeah. So um, moving on to the next style, the ambivalent or anxious attachment style. That child is raised a little bit in a home where they hear conditional, what we call conditional approval. So they're um, good at sports, they're good at academics, they're good at music and their parents are giving them, you know, um, encouragement or approval when things are going well. And when they're not hearing that, they can get a little anxious. It, are, am I okay? Am I being approved of right now? In this category, we'll tend to see a lot of approval addicts because mm -hmm. it can, it can, it mm -hmm. can train that into um, a child where they're constantly seeking that approval. People pleasers. People pleasers, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and the fourth category, uh, the disorganized attachment, and we've talked a little bit about that um, on the previous show, they will have a tendency in relationship style to have some of each. 
Mm. And it, it, that will look a little like come closer, come closer, too close. That's far enough. And for the spouse or the partner of that disorganized attachment, it can be quite confusing because they will flip between sometimes mm -hmm. I need you really close and sometimes I'm going to put up a wall so you don't get too close. All right? Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. It does. So let's move on a little bit on where the problems start um, with the communication on the two attachment styles. Last time, Angel talked a little bit about the fact that an avoidant and an anxious, a large percentage of the time, will find each other. And mm -hmm. one of the big reasons for that is um, an avoidant tends to be very self-contained. From the outside, they look very stable. Um, their spouse might think they're a little bit um, cocky at times because they're very self-assured about who they are. And, and an anxious, we already talked about, can be a little more of a people pleaser. So when an avoidant is out looking or in dating, they're going to look for someone where to feed into that nurturing part of them that got lost many, many years ago because they were told early on to just take care of it themselves. But as we all know, two and three year olds, they need nurturing. So they're going to go look for someone to feed into that in them. And what a better person than a people pleaser. They're going to come along and feed mm -hmm. into that nurturing part. As far as an anxious um, attachment goes, their emotional life world is like a little like this because it's a constant, am I okay? Am I being approved of at this point? So they're going to go look for a more avoidant attachment style because they look like a rock. They look mm -hmm. from the outside, they look very stable. And I often hear in, in counseling, and then I got in the marriage and they were a rock <laughs> because their emotions mm -hmm. tend yeah. to be a little more shut down. Mm -hmm. So um, both of these styles have something that we call an attachment wound. Okay, and that is something that when it gets hit, I react. And most of the time, most of us are not, you know, self aware enough to know that there's something deep in there that scares me enough to throw me into protection mode. All right, and that for avoidance tends to be, and this is a generalization, but it tends to be what we often call um, the other F word. <laughs> I've failed. Yeah. I've let you down. Mm -hmm. I've disappointed you in some way. And that button gets hit and they immediately go into reaction mode. And reaction mode for them is going away, shutting down, mm -hmm. finding mm -hmm. a place, going to the back of the cave, finding a place to figure this out. Mm -hmm. So in theory, we call this person a withdrawer because they withdraw when I'm in a bad place with my um, relationship, I withdraw. Great, we have this, this next chart up there. So this is an explain a little bit um, what both of these attachment styles think when there's problems within the relationship. So with, for a withdrawer, I never get it right. I'll never be enough. Why, why bother? What's the point? I often hear, I don't want to rock the boat or I'm walking on eggshells. I don't want to upset anything, okay? Yeah, I'm frustrated or never meet the mark. That's the, I don't, I don't want to fail or let anyone down, all right? Four, go ahead. You know, one of the things I was thinking as you were talking, <clears throat> we have this idea that God created somebody out there just for you. Right. And if you find that person, Mm -hmm. then you're going to have a good marriage. Right. If you, there's nothing more selfish than that, really, when you think about it. That, in other words, to say that God in heaven, in all of this universe, mm -hmm. created another human being just to make you happy. How, how ludicrous can that be? No, you know, it's not 
that we don't find the right person is we don't do the right things. And this is exactly what you're bringing out here. Right. We look at the differences and say, well, that, that must not be the right person. Right. I didn't right, find right, the right. right. No, you're not doing the right thing. I don't understand them. Right. right. Because I, because I, I, right, Lauren, I think like me. You think like mm -hmm. you, you know, and so we believe mm -hmm. that our worlds are what we react from. Exactly. Yeah. And yet God in his infinite wisdom, you love this, sends you someone almost opposite, mm -hmm. iron sharpened iron, yeah. right. <laughs> to mold us and, and help create us into. Anyway, you know, I wouldn't want to, to marry somebody like me. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd no, you're throw that yeah. <laughs> You have a wonderful wife, I know I her. Um, so we were on the anxious attachment style. So there we're talking about, I have often explained this, that, you know, that red staples button that you see, like mm -hmm. this attachment button gets hit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for an, a more anxious attachment that happens to be usually rejection. I perceive mm -hmm. in some way that I've been rejected or abandoned and I immediately go into reaction mode. And the reaction mm -hmm. mode for them is to try to get their arms around the problem. I always like, they got to gather information. You will see them ask questions, read books, go to seminars mm -hmm. to find out, okay, how do I fix what's happening right now? Opposite of, you know, their, their partner who's shutting down and going away and, and, and processing information, they're out there pushing to get information. I often hear um, their partners say, it's a, it's a little like um, poking the bear. They come at me and poke and poke and poke and poke mm -hmm. to try to, to solve what's going on. Yeah. And, and anyone who falls in this category, don't get upset with me, but it, t it tends to look like, you know, a very young toddler or something. Mm -hmm. You know, I need your attention, I need your attention, I need your attention. And if I don't get it positively, I'll kick you. Because this attachment style would much rather have n negative attention than no attention from their spouse. Mm -hmm. So I will hear partners say, you know, he or she chased me around the house to, to try to, you know, or out the door or wherever mm -hmm. to try to, to solve what's going on between two of us right now. So like Angel described last week, they desire closeness and they just get totally preoccupied. That's why they will follow you out the door and it have you know with this attachment style it's really hard to lay a problem down for the time being and not address it right away right um, and of course the avoidant that they're probably married to they don't want to talk to it talk about it or they want to talk about it later and so there's a clash there a big clash right um, right so on that little the the phrases or perceptions, what I often hear pursuers say are things like, he's never there, she's never there, they're always at work, they never look at me when I talk, they just watch TV or stay on their phone, um, I might as well just do it by myself, I've learned to not count on them, they can't be there for me, <coughs> and you will often see them comparing their lives to someone else. Mm -hmm. Facebook's a nightmare for this yes. attachment style yes. <laughs> because yes. you know every mm -hmm. everyone's life looks great. Facebook can really be a depression trigger for right. someone in that that category. Right. Yep. And 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 the the fourth style on on attachment and feelings we've talked about before the disorganized they can tend to flip between the two, so they will potentially chase after you and then get upset, shut down, and go away. Mm -hmm. So there can be complex cycles in this. And once again, I always love to explain to people, this, we, well, the first time you start looking at this and you think, oh, there's something wrong with me. I have all, all these problems. Mm -hmm. Everybody falls into one of these categories. And mm -hmm. the goal is within a relationship, if like you said, if I understand you and you understand me, I start to understand how you process information, what happens to your emotions, mm -hmm. we will move towards secure together. Right. Mm -hmm. You can get to a, a safe place, um, a, it's called a safe haven, mm -hmm. um, and a place of trust. 
both both sides have to come to the middle and it's that laying down of yourself that that's you know you're talking about you know it's, it's selfish to think this person just to make me happy because in essence this person is here really to make me lay down my selfishness and that going to the secure attachment um, involves that process you have exactly. to die to yourself in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and even going a little bit further on that a little off-road here for a second but the the positives that these attachment styles carry can really you know as we're in covenant offset some of the things that I don't do as well mm. for instance mm -hmm. You know, an avoidant tends to have a better self-concept. They do really trust themselves. They do not often trust most of you out there because <laughs> mm -hmm. they learned that early on. They learned that I, I went to the hole to be nurtured and it wasn't available. So you might not be trustworthy, I am. Mm -hmm. And anxious, on the other hand, would be the opposite of that. You know, I. I do trust you guys all out there. That's the sharing the feelings that Angel talked about. You know, I trust that you could meet those needs if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So there must be something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. So they tend to have a more positive view of others and a more negative view of themselves. That's good. And they tend to be very sacrificing and they tend to be very nurturing. And, and yeah. a lot of times you just really see um, servants yes it, yes you know, i mean they they will they they do love people even if it even if the relationships are difficult and they do try to please them and that's not always a bad thing right um so there are positives mm -hmm. so getting together for the two of them if i am in a more anxious attachment i am a little bit conscious of rejection in relationships and i come home and tell you move on that Sally did something mean at work and if you were an avoidant you would look at me and say who cares no. because because you don't aren't preoccupied with that your strength mm -hmm. actually can meet my weakness Absolutely. you know you can help me understand the mm -hmm. value of relationships you know conversely um, we talked about avoidance really don't like to fail right so I have often seen, um, I can think of a businessman right now, he just bankrupt himself, is he's not leaving plan A. Mm -hmm. He does not want to leave plan A. Well, they tend to marry someone who's as flexible as all get out. You know, mm -hmm. so if it's time to redirect, <coughs> their anxious partner will go, well, let's just try this, mm -hmm. or let's just try this. Adapt. Yeah, they'll mm -hmm. adapt. And so leaning on each other, you know, with those strengths and weaknesses, it's just um, one of the another miracles of a covenant that works really well mm -hmm. together. It's just wonderful. And sometimes, especially men, they have difficulty sharing with their wife what they need yeah. because they feel like somehow that lessens their manhood yeah. to say mm -hmm. to their wife, I need this. Right. And so men, women normally doesn't have too much trouble to say to a man what I need you to do. But men right. usually have problems telling the wife, this is what I need from you. Right. And that is certainly one of the needful areas. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and in that case you just gave us, you know, the man would be the, the more avoidant. Mm -hmm. And we do see women in that category mm -hmm. as well. Oh, yeah. and, um, and it causes them to be restricted in their emotional. So let's just, I know we're close to out time, let's just skip to that, um, that cycle graph. And this, this graph kind of explains where this goes wrong. This interaction goes wrong. So an anxious is a pursuer, we talked about that. I pursue you when things aren't going well. And a more avoidant is a withdrawer. That's what I do when we're in a bad place, I shut down. So this is a little infinity, and if we started at the top of both of them with perceptions, okay, we're in a fight. I'm a pursuer and I'm a withdrawer. We're in a fight. I'm a withdrawer. What do I do? I go down that arrow and meet your worst thing. Those Remember those attachment wounds? 
So I'm, my, my pursuer's unmet attachment need is rejection, and I'm a withdrawer, and we get in a fight, and I withdraw, I immediately tell you, you're being rejected. Mm. And a primary emotion below the line of understanding for a pursuer is often fear. I've generalized what I see is often fear. But you're not safe right now. We're in a fight. I'm not going to talk to you about my fear. So I'm going to show you my secondary emotion. Going up the left side here, my secondary emotion, which is usually anger. I'm frustrated. I'm anger. I'm angry. They have a perception, you know, that you don't want to be here for me. So what do they do? Their pursuer, they start poking. They start asking questions. They start, you know, criticizing. And that flows down the middle to the unmet attachment need of the withdrawer, which is failing. What is my poking telling you? Well, you're not getting this right. You're screwing up on this marriage. You're not doing it well. Mm -hmm. And if you go up the right-hand side of this, their primary emotions tend to be a little bit, I, I often see shame because it's how a lot of this was created. You know, LaVon, you really disappointed me. So I'm hearing that message. Mm -hmm. Above the line, they'll show you of emotion, they'll show you a little anger as well because <laughs> they're, they're mad about this and their perception are, you know, they don't want me. They don't want to be here. And this little infinity cycle goes around and around and around. And we get stuck in that. And what I love to say in counseling is, this is the problem, not the people. Amen. And we need to learn how to, like you said, understand each other emotions in the process. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, it so yes. much that you've come in yeah. these two weeks and uh, just much, much rich material. Oh, goodness. And listen, your marriage, next time you feel like, well, I just got the wrong person. No, you didn't. You're <laughs> doing the wrong thing. And if you do marriage right, it's heaven on earth. You do it wrong, fill in the space. But I know... Sarah and I will celebrate 56 years oh, wow. in, in July, <laughs> and she's the love of my life. Marriage is a wonderful thing, but you have to do it God's way. Not, not just the way you feel. If you go by the way you feel, you're going to be on a roller coaster. And, uh, but thank you so much. This has been good material. I hope you have uh, gotten some out of uh, some very rich material in the last couple of weeks. But you join us each week. God bless you.